London to Hong Kong in two hours is an epic moving panorama, which measures over 50 meters in length, dates to around 1860, and brings to life the epic journey over land and sea between Britain and the Far East. It is the precursor to cinema. It was made to be seen in a box held between two spools and turned very slowly to allow the spectators to be able to see the unfolding action. The panorama is a visual feast. It's like the travel program of its day. It was made in a world before modern technology offered us opportunities to see what the world was like. It was made for an audience who may have heard tales of the Far East, but probably had no visual experience of it. The panorama starts just by London Bridge. We head down the river and out of the Thames estuary. We go on having passed the Tower of London, crossing the Channel, going across to Ostend, where we get a great view of this uh, railway station, which marks the changeover from a ship down to a train journey to Marseille. In Marseille, we can see a whole group of French soldiers. There's a rather elegant couple, the man wearing a smart top hat. And then we get into clearly a British ship again, flying the Red Ensign and prepared to set out over the Mediterranean. And then we see our first Eastern sunset, which are always depicted in these quite spectacular colors. And as day moves into night, we reach Jaffa. The fascinating part of this journey is that it predates the Suez Canal. So we have to travel by land. We go from Jaffa to Jerusalem. We see a Bedouin camp in the desert, narrowly escape a band of lawless robbers, experience a mirage, and admire the wondrous pyramids. Upon reaching the coast, we sail down the Red Sea and across the Indian Ocean. At Ceylon, we explore the island. Really wonderfully depicted is the jungle, the tropical foliage of banyan trees. After seeing this, we catch a glimpse of one of the most spectacular parts of the journey, a tiger hunt. You can see the tiger in a moment of desperation is reaching onto the elephant's head and the elephant is attempting to lash out against it. And from there we end up in Gaul and we get a sight of some of the soldiers who remained loyal to the British Empire, although they were Indians themselves. On board ship once again, we enter the Straits of Malacca, where one of the dramatic parts of the journey takes place. We encounter a furious storm, followed by this really beautiful rainbow. The amazing journey comes to an end in Hong Kong. We go from seeing the port and some of the British soldiers there. We see the Ising Bakery, where the baker had poisoned some of the British inhabitants of Hong Kong. And right at the end, as day turns to night, we see an illuminated fountain. In this quite beautiful and harmonious way, we're invited to reflect on this amazing journey undergone across so many different countries and cultures. The panorama was made by a father and son working in the City of London as shipping clerks. Amateur artists of some standing, the father, John Lamb, exhibited at the Royal Academy in London, and his son assisted him in the creation of this extraordinary object. This is the first time that this panorama will come to auction. It's always remained in the same family ever since it was painted in around 1860. It's also in very fresh, beautiful condition. The colors remain vivid um, so much longer after it was made. It is a very rare opportunity to acquire an extraordinary object which brings to life the world as it was seen by British travelers in the mid-19th century.